Welcome back to KGSM TV. I'm Reese Payne. And I'm Ashley Luthons. In this show, we'll have coverage over the Women's Workplace Luncheon, a Reds Life update, and we'll wrap up the show with the Griffin Sports update. Spring break is over and we are all back to reality. Let's take a look at what some of our students did over break. So today we're going to go around campus and uh, see what our students here did on spring break. Over, over spring break, I... Uh... So I went to the Sweet 16 and the Elite 8 games and I did an internship, which was pretty cool. Um, it was at an athletic facility. I was able to create my own classes and teach them to people, which was a fun experience. For spring break, I went to the tanning beds to make it look like I went somewhere tropical. <laughs> okay, I uh, didn't apply sunscreen and I went to Florida. Um, so I went to Springfield and I went to Raleigh to visit my siblings and fun story, me and my sister, we love Bass Pro, obviously, and we were in like the Wonders of Wildlife and the aquarium and everything and the fire alarms went off until we got evacuated and then they let us back in and then we got evacuated again and it was awful, but also wonderful, so it's been great. Uh, I went back to Oklahoma City, back home, and worked the whole time pretty much and just enjoyed a nice relaxing week away from school. So uh, a lot of our students looked like they, uh, they had a lot of great time outside. So that's all we've got for today. Reporting for KGSM TV, Reese Bay. Our students seem to have a good spring break. Now it's time to get back in the books and finish the semester strong. Prior to spring break, Residential Life and Housing sent an email to all residents. In said email, the staff wanted to remind students of the rule they have on alcohol and drug paraphernalia and what that entails. Alcohol and drug paraphernalia are not allowed in the residence halls. This includes posters portraying the use or promotion of drugs or alcohol, neon bar signs, glassware with alcohol or drug branding, etc. It was a good reminder for students to, for future health checks and safety checks. The Missouri Western Communications Department has made a big move from Edder Hall to Spratt this past week. Let's see how the move went. Today I'm here at the second story of Spratt where our communications department has recently moved. I'll be getting a few words from professors on what they feel about the move. Last week um, we finally had the suite finished. A physical plant helped us move over here. Um, technical, technology services moved stuff over as well, so we're all finally in the same space. Um, it's great. Um, for the first time since we became a department, everybody is essentially in the same space. Um, it's a great thing in terms of unifying the department and our goals and our purposes and our programs. Um, it's also great, I mean, considering we are, among other things, the journalism department. Uh, we're here in the building with the Cronkite Memorial, um, this wonderful memorial to one of America's most significant journalists, obviously. Um, so it's a nice connection to us. Um, something good about the move of the communication department to Spratt from Eater is that we don't have to walk all the way two buildings over just to have a meeting with our advisor in between our classes that are always in the building. Reporting for KGSM TV, Reese Payne. Looks like life just got a lot easier for the communication students here on campus. If you'd like to check out the new communications office, offices, they're located at the second floor of Spratt. We'll be back with more stories right after the break. A leading problem I faced is a misunderstanding on the part of students of the importance of academic advising. They miss appointments. They don't make appointments. But what's most disappointing is when they come unprepared. Give me a student with a plan in their head, or better yet, on paper. We could talk about their interests, not just about their classes. We could discuss internships, classwork, grad programs. It would open the door to what advising is truly about. Can I help you? But instead, they come to me in a panic when they need to okay, register because... I need to talk to you. I was trying to register for my classes, but it wouldn't let me do it because I need my pen, and I haven't had time to set up an advising, so I don't even know what classes I need to take, so I just signed up for a bunch of random ones, and I'm going to drop them later. So can I have my pen real fast? Because I'm still locked into a computer in the lab. Am I interrupting? Take ownership of your education. Make the most of your advisement by being proactive, punctual, and prepared. You'll open the door to more personalized attention and avoid costly setbacks. It's never too soon to begin planning your next steps at Missouri Western. In honor of Women's History Month, Missouri Western hosted a luncheon on Wednesday in order to celebrate women in the workplace. 
In recognition of Women's History Month, the Center for Diversity and Inclusion here at Missouri Western honored women in the workplace by hosting a luncheon and panel discussion. The event was co-sponsored by the Dean of Students and the Center for Career Development. This lunch and panel was also free and open to the public. Tammy Killen, one of the panelists, described the event. I think it was a very energetic event, actually. Um, I enjoyed um, listening to the other panelists, uh, their journey, their perspective, their advice. Um, and I think you could just feel that in the room, the energy, and just kind of that camaraderie between women. The audience was able to enjoy a nice lunch while also listening to women from different job fields share their experiences. Leslie Stone, the Director of Diversity and Inclusion, explained why it's important for women in the workplace to be celebrated. I think there have been a lot of women that have gone before us um, that have paved the way for um, where I'm at today and where other women are at in, in their employment and um, I just think it's important to, to stop and recognize us. Reporting for KGSM TV, I'm Ashley Luthons. The Center for Diversity and Inclusion looks forward to hosting more events in order to celebrate everyone. This coming April is full of events, and here's one that you might be interested in attending. The Griffin Film Festival, which is an event that showcases the thesis and student films here at Missouri Western, is happening on April 28th. It will take place from 7 to 9 p.m. at the Missouri Theater. The doors open at 6 p.m., and students will get in free with a school ID. Be sure to attend and support your local art students. We will be back with sports right after the break. Hi, I'm Teresa Harrington. I am the founder of Creatures by Teresa. And what we do is we have a small animal rescue that we take in all the small animals, no dogs and cats, rabbits, reptiles, fish, birds, things like that. We have a Facebook page, we have a website, and we I'm Teresa Harrington. I am the founder of Creatures by Teresa. And what we do is we have a small animal rescue that we take in all the small animals, no dogs and cats, rabbits, reptiles, fish, birds, things like that. We have a Facebook page, we have a website, and we have put all our animals up for adoption on Pet Finder. So that way people can see what we have up for adoption. But our adoption events and our library and school programs are our greatest fundraisers right now. We also do things like we will bring animals to birthday parties and things like that. So, the, you know, the kids can get an up close personal experience with some of the animals that they may not. Hello, welcome to the eSports Arena. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so you're just letting everyone in? Yeah. Looking for a place to hang out, game, or just relax? The Griffin Esports Arena is open to all students. Head on over today. As fun as college is, it can be a really stressful time. It's easy to feel alone. Even in full classrooms, sometimes it still feels like you have no one. It's especially easy to feel isolated during these crazy times. It's hard to recognize the signs when you don't know them. Don't be afraid to reach out and get help. There are always ways to get help on campus. The counseling center is always ready to work with you. There's also lots of ways to get help off campus. There are several different hotlines you can reach out to. Make sure to check in on your friends and family. Keep an eye out for the signs. There's no shame in recognizing that you're struggling. There's no shame in asking for help. There is no shame in taking care of yourself. You and your mental health are the priority. See the signs. Take action. 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 I really encourage if you need to talk to someone, reach out to us. That's what we're here for. Welcome back to KGSM TV Sports. I'm Reese Payne. And I'm Kanab Yelovitz. But before we get started with our Griffin Sports update, we have some exciting breaking news regarding the Kansas City Chiefs. According to Tommy Rezach from KFEQ, the Kansas City Chiefs have decided to exercise their option to extend their contract with Missouri Western, making Missouri Western their home for training camp once again. 
Chiefs President Mark Donovan said that we are thrilled to announce that we will return to Missouri Western State University and the St. Joseph community for another two years. Missouri Western and St. Joseph have warmly hosted our teams and fans for the past 13 years. I want to thank President Dr. Elizabeth Kennedy and Director of Athletics Andy Carter for their leadership throughout this process. And we look forward to starting our 2023 season at Missouri Western in the summer. It was a huge week for the Griffin golf team as the women's squad hosted their first event of the year at the Holiday Inn Invitational at the St. Joseph Country Club, and they made it count as Matt Thresher enjoyed his first ever team win as the Griffs got the gold. Junior, junior Julie Hoffmanova and sophomore Mariana Castiego led the way with second and third place, finished respectfully. The win, the win is the Griffins' third straight top three finish. Griffin softball sits at 4-4 four four in the MIAA, which is not indicative of their overall success. The team sits at 22-9 overall and looks to replicate the success they had early on in the year. This weekend could do the trick as they have two home games against a Washburn team third in the league today and two on Sunday against the Hornets of Emporia State. Time is running out for the Griffin baseball team to get back in the MIAA postseason contention. This weekend, sees a North, they see a Northeastern State team who comes to town for their three straight crucial games for both teams. Griffin Tennis has been a long overdue in getting a national ranking. That finally came this week as the 10-4 Griffins checked in at number 25 in the nation this week. The team has earned a weekend off before home MIAA matchups Thursday versus Fort Hayes State and Saturday against Nebraska Kearney and the Lopers. That's it for Griffin Sports. We'll be back after the break to sign off. Tonight on Mr. Mummy's Horathon. Killer dolls strike in Blood Buddy. Then there's no whisper within the woods. And finally, these kids are on thin ice with this goalie in Wednesday the 27th. You won't want to miss out. Well, that would be a grave mistake. <laughs> Starts tonight at midnight on Channel 17. Jillian. 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 Breathe. Thanks. Jillian, how often do you relive this night? Constantly. He was my best friend and now I'm all alone. I understand how it can feel when you lose someone so important like that. I want you to think hard on this one for me. Do you have a support system? Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot this was today. I'll be out in just a second. Are you open to trying something a little more experimental? Coming up on Friday, April 7th, we'll have more stories for you in our usual segments. We will discuss the Griffin softball four-game weekend slate as well as lacrosse's first conference game. Be sure to stay up to date with all things KGSM-TV by following us on Facebook and YouTube. We'll see you again on Friday. 